Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. So in the previous video, we started talking about how WH movement works. It's a movement that involves a WH phrase, that's a, a, either a DP or an uh, adverb phrase, that is headed by an element that in English begins with WH, but in other languages can begin with another uh, item. This movement uh, ends up in the specifier of the CP, but moves from a case position if it's a DP, or um, from an adjunct position if it's an adjunct. Let's do a sample sentence to see how we, in fact, derive the WH order in a relatively simple WH question. So the sentence we're going to, um, we're going to do is we're going to do, what did John bake? This is the basic sentence we're going to do. We, we're going to start off by drawing the D structure. Remember, the D structure is essentially the structure that is created that meets the fader criterion. So it puts items into the sentence in the position where they would receive their theta, their theta rules. We're using voice phrase here, um, slightly different than we have um, previous to the last unit, um, where we're introducing agents in the specifier of an active voice phrase, and we're introducing themes in the normal place as the complement to the verb. So we have uh, here the theta grids for these two items. We have active voice, which introduces the agent, and it takes as a complement um, the verb phrase right here. This notation I'm using here is a little bit of an abbreviation of a theta grid. Instead of using columns, I'm just using this bracketed notation. But it says the same thing as the columns of theta grids um, in the previous units. Um, the verb bake, which heads the VP, takes a DP complement, which is a theme. So that's right there. So we have a list of constraints we have to meet. So the first constraint we have to meet, and it's the constraint that holds on D structures, is the theta criterion. And the theta criterion says that every theta role must be assigned, and every DP must get a theta uh, take a theta role. So this seems to be met in this structure. John here is getting a theta role um, from the active uh, voice phrase, uh, and that's the agent role. And uh, what is getting a uh, theme role here? Uh, all the theta uh, roles have been assigned, so we've met the theta criterion. Okay, the next thing we note is that this sentence is a plus Q sentence. So plus Q means you're going to do subject to ox inversion. Plus Q means it's a question. So in English, when we do subject to ox inversion, uh, we're, we're moving the T node into the C node uh, because of the plus Q feature. Now this sentence is a little problematic because there is no um, auxiliary. Uh, so nor, you might have had have or be here, but there's no auxiliary. So what do we do? We have to do an expletive insertion into this T node, and we're going, the expletive we're going to insert is the dummy do, the do insertion. So we're going to stick a did in here. It's did because this is past tense. So we stick a did in there in order to have something in the T node uh, to move into the complementizer phrase. Then we move that did into the complement. Uh, the complementizer. Um, some people sometimes ask, why did I stick the do in here rather than in the complementizer itself? Um, that's simply because in other contexts you do do insertion into the T position. So for example, in, um, in uh, negative sentences and emphatic sentences, the do goes here in T. So we're just going to do the same thing here. We're going to put the did into the T node and then we're going to move it into the complementizer because of the plus Q feature, which is going to give us subject to oxygen version. 
the plus Q is met. Next thing we have to look at is whether or not uh, all the DPs have case. Um, this is, uh, remember that the case filter holds after you do all the movements, but let's, let's just make sure that it will be met at the end. So the, we have um, two DPs. We have the DP here that's in uh, the specifier of the voice phrase, and we have the DP that's in the complement position to the verb. The specifier of the voice phrase is not a case position. Remember, there's only three case positions. Specifier of finite T for nominative case, complement to a preposition for prepositional case, and complement to a verb for accusative case. So this guy can't stay there. It's going to have to move. Um, we have a case position right here. We have a finite uh, T. And look, I've marked it with a nominative case feature to indicate that this is a position in which we can check nominative case. So that DP moves into the specifier of the TP. Um, as it happens, this DP down here uh, which is in its theta position, but this is also its case position because this is a position as complement to the verb where it can get accusative case. So after we've done this movement, the case filter is met. Now, it's also the case that that movement met another constraint, the constraint of the EPP, the constraint that every sentence have a subject, where subject is defined as the specifier of a TP. And indeed, once you've moved this guy into the specifier of the TP, we've met that condition. We have that, that condition is different than the case filter because it, um, Sometimes it's not, the, it's not this argument that moves into this position, it's another one. All right, so we've met the EPP. The last thing we have to do is meet the requirements of this plus WH feature, because this is a WH question. And luckily, we have a WH word down here. So we can just move that DP up into the specifier of the CP, and that will... Um, uh, meet the, the requirements of this WH element uh, because this DP will be close to, as in the specifier of, uh, this WH complement project. So that feature is met. So this is the derivation of the sentence, what did John bake? Um, this puts everything in the right order. We have a couple of null things, like we have the trace of the did, we have the traces of the um, voice phrase, uh, the, of the subject and of the object, but uh, this effectively gives us the correct order and it makes sure that all of our particular constraints we've argued for are indeed met. This is a well-formed S structure, which is what we want.